And what's crazy about all this stuff in this determinant tomato plot that looks so good right now is I haven't really fed it hardly at all. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. We've got a fun day planned in the garden this afternoon. We're going to check on our tomatoes, both our determinants and our indeterminates over here. See how they're doing. Check on their progress because they're growing really fast. Then we're going to plant some more tomatoes as if we need any more tomatoes. But I've got a few varieties that are finally ready in the greenhouse. Some varieties that viewers sent us that I wanted to try. We're also going to be planting some basil to finish out that determinate tomato and pepper plot. And I'm sure we've got some other things we need to do as well that we'll get into later in the video. So before we check on those tomatoes, it's been a little while since I've took you guys inside the greenhouse. Let's go see what we got going on in there because we got a few other things besides those tomatoes that we're going to need to plant soon. And there's a bee hung up right there. Maybe I'll see if I can turn him loose. Sounds like a chainsaw. That rascal is loud. So this side of the greenhouse is quickly emptying out. We got about half our fig trees shipped and got the rest of them here that we still have to send out. Still don't know if we'll have any extras left over, but I'll be sure to let you guys know as soon as I'm able to make a determination on that. We swing over to the other side here. I've got some tomato plants in the back there that I need to chunk, just extras I held on to. Well, they're pretty much done. Got a few pepper plants there. Got this one I think I'm going to plant. I've just been saving the rest of these to give away to folks. But this daddle pepper here is finally looking out. It's ready to transplant. So I need to find somewhere to put that guy. Got watermelons left here. Just been kind of hanging on to those. I did have to replace a few transplants. And I've just been giving these away as people ask for them or ask if I've got any extra transplants. Here's all our herbs. We got our basil in the back there that needs to go in the ground today. I need to get me some more of those um, fire ring raised beds for the rest of these herbs. Pumpkins, kind of the same thing as watermelons. Just been hanging on to these and giving them away to a few folks that want them. These are the tomatoes we're going to be planting today. Some nice looking transplants right there that we grew out in this 24 cell tray. We look underneath those tomatoes we've got those armageddon peppers there they're supposed to be super hot they're growing slow and i think they're shaded a little bit by those tomatoes so hopefully getting those tomatoes planted today we can get those peppers sped up and give those super hot peppers a try we've got our okra here which isn't far from being ready to plant in the ground this stuff was a little slow to germinate but now we've got plenty of viable plants here to go with Got our Alibaba watermelons. These are getting close to being ready to transplant, so we're gonna put those where we pulled up those English peas on the last video. And then we've got all these flowers here that we've gotta get planted. I kinda of forgot about these because they're back in the corner here. But we got these giant sunflowers, zinnias, all kind of fun stuff. We'll probably be planting this stuff on the next video. And since the last time we've been in here, I've added this setup right here, this little fertilizer siphon to make it easier to feed my plants now that little mixture out here looks pretty nasty and it smells funky but it does a good job keeping these plants fed so what i've been doing is using agrothrive in there and also been using some of that nature safe 777 that's where some of that particular material there comes from but it doesn't seem to clog up anything and it's been keeping our plants nice and happy here everything looks really healthy and so i've just been fertilizing pretty much every single time i water as opposed to just fertilizing a couple times a week so with that siphoning system i've been doing some testing over the last month with a lot of these transplants that are ready to plant now seeing how often i can fertilize kind of what i can get away with using some of these organic fertilizers like the AgriThrive, like the NatureSafe 777. And what I found is I can pretty much fertilize them every day. So I just put kind of a low dosage in that bucket, keep that bucket full with fertilizer, and I'm fertilizing, I'm feeding these plants every single time I water. And it doesn't hurt anything and it makes some really nice healthy plants with a really nice root system. So as opposed to just feeding once or twice a week, I'm feeding every single day at a low dose. I can even feed 
when plants are tiny before they get true leaves or even before they germinate. I've used, I haven't pulled off the siphon to water when I'm planting new stuff, when I'm putting new seeds in cells. So with this system, at a low dosage of both of those organic fertilizers, we just feed simultaneously and the plants really seem to like it. All right, back outside the greenhouse now. Let's check on these tomatoes. We'll start off with our indeterminates here. So besides all the crazy fast growth, a decent amount has changed with my setup here since the last time I showed you guys. Obviously, we've got pine straw on this row. I just picked up another truckload and I'm gonna soon put pine straw on this row too. Just makes it easier. Keeps me from having to weed between these plants as they grow and hopefully conserve some moisture because it is dry, dry, dry. You can look at that soil between those rows there and it is just powder dry. Now, in addition to adding that pine straw, another thing I had to change was my setup here at the bottom of my trellising system. So initially I had wrapped that string around the bottom of the stem and then tied it to that little bamboo stick there. But I quickly realized that as that stem got bigger, I was basically just girdling that stem with the string. So I unwrapped all the twine around the base there, added a clip, still have it tied to the bamboo stick to just give a little extra support in case we get wind, and that is working much better. Now, I'm probably, because this is the first time I'm doing this, probably going to add more clips than I actually need, but I want to keep these guys nice and supported. We've got blooms all over this plant right here. I've got three clips on it so far, and it's about halfway to the top there. This rose variety is growing faster than some of the rest of them. These over here aren't quite as tall, only about, I don't know, three and a half foot tall, but these are loaded down with blooms too. Got little bitty tomatoes on that guy right there. And these plants are looking really, really healthy. And I figured out kind of my schedule for coming out here and pruning and adding more clips. As long as I do it probably every four days or so, I can keep up with it. It's not something I have to get out here and do every single day. I am trying to leave some foliage on the plants to shade the fruits a little bit. So I'm trimming off just enough to keep everything to a single stem, but trying to leave some of these lateral branches as they grow. So I do have some foliage there. To protect those tomatoes as they ripen. I think this is our biggest one here which is a giant crimson. Looks like we have three tomatoes in a cluster there and that one is probably a little bigger than a half dollar. So we're learning as we go with this kind of drop string trellising technique. Everything seems to be working well so far. Just kind of getting the hang of how often we need to come out here and prune them add more clips we learned a valuable lesson about wrapping the string around the base there but i think everything's going to work out in the end we're just having to be flexible and ready to adapt as quickly as possible when we realize that we didn't do something right and shifting from there where our indeterminates are so over here where our determinants are we have more good looking plants so a couple videos ago we put some pine straw around these peppers here and they have since popped i don't think they got anything to do with the straw but man they are looking really really good probably need to add another line of string on those soon we need to go ahead and get our trellis set up on our eggplant and our other peppers here put some straw around those we've got our torangina cherry tomatoes here looking really good got some tomatoes that look big enough to eat they're just not the right color yet so hopefully those turn soon and we can give those a try and now i don't have my sheet out in front of me to tell you which of these determinants are which as far as the variety goes but they're all looking fabulous already added a third line of string there on our florida weave trellis we got really really healthy plants here we got blooms all over the place probably need to add a fourth line of string this week and some of the plants were looking taller or growing a little faster than others in the beginning but they've all kind of caught up to one another and all kind of leveled out and we got some pretty nice even growth along here and couldn't ask for a better color on these plants 
and just loaded down with blooms up oh, there's some tomatoes right there y'all see in there there's at least three right in there so it might not be long on some of these determinate varieties and what's crazy about all this stuff in this determinate tomato plot that looks so good right now is I haven't really fed it hardly at all. We put that 1300 down at planting based on our soil test results, which told us we had lots of phosphorus and lots of potassium. So if we believe our soil test results, we knew this plot was already pretty fertile. And so we just added that 1300. I haven't given them anything else. Well, I, I correct myself there. I did foliar feed them a little bit after transplanting, but that's really only given micros. It's really not given a whole lot of major nutrients. So for those of you who have been with us from the beginning here on the Lazy Dog Farm channel, you might recall when we started this channel, we made a video talking about how we were going to kind of shift our fertilization plans, try to do most everything organically and our goal there was to have a more sustained fertility in our plots feed the soil more as opposed to just feeding the plants we know we can grow good produce here with synthetic fertilizers just feeding the plants we did it for years but we wanted to have more sustained fertility so we weren't coming in there trying to rescue some plants that looked like they needed something and i think I won't say we've done it yet, but we're well on our way to achieving that goal. And this plot is a perfect example of that. We put some plants in the ground, we haven't had to give them a whole lot, and we're creating that more sustained fertility. So our plots aren't really zapped when a crop is done. And we'll still plant some, or still put some pre-plant fertilizer underneath everything we plant we might not have to give it much else because our soils are constantly staying more fertile. So today what we need to do in this fertile plot is finish it out as far as planting goes. So we've got this blank space here. We're gonna put in a row of indeterminate tomatoes. We're gonna to use that same trellis system that we've got over there. We're not gonna set it up today, but that's our eventual plan. So we're gonna put in a row of indeterminate tomatoes here i can't remember if i've got three or four different varieties and then over here we left a little bit of space so we can grow an entire row of basil which is what i like to do did this last year almost like a hedgerow so we're going to put a whole row of basil in this little piece right here beside that tomato row so i'm going to put down a couple lines of drip tape here i will put some 1300 in the furrow where we're going to be planting the tomatoes i don't think i'm going to put anything down for the basil it should be fine just with the natural fertility that's in this soil here so let me get all that put down and then we'll do some planting okay so we got our drip lines in we didn't cover this drip line for the tomatoes yet because we want to plant those kind of deep we got that 1300 in the furrow there but over here where the basil's going where we're going to start out we did cover the tape because we're going to put this basil on a double row so we covered it with a wheel hoe to give us those two little mini furrows that we like so we've got three different varieties of basil we've got lemon basil thai basil and genovese basil we grew thai basil last year and i think just some standard italian basil so I think this is the first time I've tried lemon basil and Genovese. So we're going to stick these in here pretty thick. See if I can get these transplants out. Oh, that one's kind of dry. Maybe I should have watered these a little bit. We'll get some water here from this tape pretty soon. We're going to plant these in here pretty thick. And I'll tell you more about my plans for this row when we get done. We're going to put these transplants in here probably about six inches apart or so. Six to eight inches apart along the row we're going to put them on both sides of this tape here and have a nice dense row of basil probably just do a third a third a third as far as the three different varieties that way we have a nice mixture of each all right so we got them in there now i had to do a little bit of space management as i got along or further down the row started putting that lemon basil pretty close together as i got on down there i realized I ain't got enough transplants to put them all that close. So I had to spread them out a little bit down there, which would be all right. I still think we can accomplish the same goal. The rest of these herbs here are gonna go in raised beds. Now you might be thinking to yourself, a 30 foot double row of basil 
who in the world needs that much basil but hear me out so last year i planted an entire 30 foot row of basil just like this in our flower plot and once the basil got on up about a foot tall of course it starts flowering when it gets hot and i realized i can just take my head shears and go out there and trim it up just like you would a hedgerow of shrubbery or something like that and then just keep getting bushier and bushier and just kind of cut it back just a little bit just cutting the flowers off every couple of weeks or so and we ended up with just this beautiful hedgerow of basil yes way more basil than we can use but i just like the way it smells i like the way it looks when done like that it's just as easy to plant a whole row as it is a half a row and so that's why we're doing the basil like this some of it is just for aesthetic purposes we will use a good bit of it but we probably won't ever use all of it so now that we've got our basil planted time to plant these tomatoes because you can never have too many tomato plants right and I realize it's probably a little later than ideal to be planting tomatoes down here in the south but we're going to give it a shot because we want to give these varieties a try if we only get a couple tomatoes off of them it'll still be worth it because we can see if it's something we want to grow next year so let me tell you what we got here so we got two different varieties of giant tomatoes that were sent to us by Heavenly Hills Homestead these two up front here supposedly the parent tomatoes were 7.35 pounds which is massive and then the other ones made a or their parent was a 5.46 pound tomato so we'll see if we can grow some absolute giant tomatoes then we have a variety called orange peach which i think is available on some seed website seems like somebody told me baker creek carries that variety and then we've got a variety called turkey creek that a viewer sent us and I'm terrible about remembering the sources of these seeds. I want to say it's from Kentucky. I know it's definitely north of us, but uh, he said it was a good variety. So we're going to give it a try. So we're going to do um, two of the seven pound giants, two of the five pound giants, three of the orange peach plants, and three of the turkey creek plants. And just like we did with our other indeterminate tomatoes over there, the ones that are really growing fast, we're going to put these on a three foot spacing we got a nice transplant there, nice little root ball. And these aren't really, really big, so I can't plant them really, really deep. But we'll plant them as deep as we can here. We'll make us a hole beside that emitter. Stick that plug down in there. And we'll cover them up like that. So then we got a plant right there. We'll skip an emitter right there. Skip another emitter right there. And then we need to put our next plant right here. All right, so we got all those in there on a three foot spacing. You know, getting about 10 plants on this 30 foot row. So when these grow up a little bit, we'll hill them just like we did those indeterminates way over there. And then when they get up about a foot, foot and a half tall or so, we'll come in here and set up another one of those string trellises just like we did over there. And I promise, that's all the tomatoes I'm planting. Don't have any more in the greenhouse that can be planted. Don't have any more room to plant anymore. So now we're officially done planting tomatoes. Now we'll just wait to taste some delicious tomatoes, hopefully when they're ripe. And I'd say we probably might have some ripe in about three weeks or so. Now before we do some more stuff in the garden, and while I've got it on my mind, it won't be long before it'll be time to plant sweet potatoes. Now, where our garlic is now is where our sweet potatoes will be going. So we'll be planting them pretty much as soon as we pull that garlic out of there. We've got to get that straw out of there, but the ground should be nice and ready. Shouldn't have to do much ground prep. So we get our sweet potato slips from Steel Plant Company in Gleason, Tennessee. We've been growing their slips for a long, long time. Great company. I know those guys personally. We do have an affiliate link for them down below. So if you want to order from them, we'd appreciate it. If you used our affiliate link, if you're watching on YouTube, the affiliate link is below. This year, we're going to grow the Georgia Jet, which we grow every year. I think we're going to grow the Puerto Rico, which we grew last year and like pretty good. And then they've got one called the Orleans, which I've never tried. And I think we're going to try that one as well. So we're at least going to grow those three, probably a row of each. Unless when I talk to them in a little bit, they convince me to grow 
an additional variety but we're at least going to try those three i'm probably going to request my ship date be somewhere in the middle to the end of may because i know the garlic will be out of there by then you can request your ship date whenever you want it so they send them to you you know when you're ready to plant them i do know that they stop shipping i want to say sometime in june or so because they have to plant their own sweet potatoes to grow their own slip stock for the next year so if you want to grow sweet potatoes give steel plant company a call or go on their website and use our affiliate link get your sweet potato slips ordered before they run out because they usually do run out at some point now one last thing i want to get done in the garden this afternoon has to do with that celery over there but before we make it over there y'all take a look at these pumpkins man got some good looking pumpkin plants here one thing about having a dry spring like we're having now is we don't have near as many plant diseases we can feed them with that drip and that's why i prefer a dry spring over a wet spring anytime them jade cross pumpkins are looking mighty fine already got some blooms on those we got our fairy tales there and then these giant pumpkins are doing what giant pumpkins do grow really fast and they'll be crawling all over the place before too long i'm usually not pretty good about doing all the vine training techniques to grow a maximum size pumpkin so i don't know if i'll get into all that we'll just see how big a one we get with the plants we got here and then we have this beautiful green celery right here which several videos ago we put rubber bands around and healed it up tall to try and blanch it and it's hanging in there still looking pretty good we've been making sure to give it plenty of water at this stage which is what i hear it needs and now we're just waiting on those stalks to get a little bit bigger before we harvest it now after we posted that video where we healed this celery to blanch it we had several people comment saying they don't ever blanch their celery and we even had one guy said he used to be a commercial celery farmer and that nowadays the celery farmers don't blanch it because people want dark green celery as opposed to the more translucent or white celery that you get as a result of blanching so i thought after reading those comments this would be a fine time to test it some people have said that blanching the celery makes it more palatable makes it not as bitter others have said there's no need to blanch it so what i want to do is unblanch a few of these celery plants that way we can compare them when we do harvest them and we can see which flavor we like the best so i'm going to take these three or four plants on the end here and i'm going to remove this dirt from around the plants that way they're no longer blanched they'll turn green again if they've developed any pale color from being covered with the dirt and this would be a good little test and we can see how we like our celery and we'll be able to tell how we want to do it in future years so now we'll be able to compare that to that so i'm looking forward to harvesting and tasting that celery soon especially since we've kind of given up on it but looks like we're going to get something after all and i think it would only be appropriate to fry up a big mess of hot wings and have some of our homegrown celery alongside it as a nice accompaniment and as we're getting closer and closer to having ripe tomatoes here from the backyard grocery store it's time to be getting your mayonnaise plans ready too now if we've learned anything over the last few years is we can have a shortage of something and all of a sudden you know didn't even know it was coming so go ahead and plan ahead for all those tomato sandwiches next time you're in your grocery store we're going to get you a big jug of duke's mayonnaise that way you got plenty and if there is a shortage you're covered and let me know in the comments below what you think the estimated date will be when you have your first ripe tomato i'd like to hear answers from all over the country i'm guessing here in about three to four weeks but let me know what you think the date is going to be when you're able to enjoy the first ripe tomato from your backyard grocery store and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to check out our affiliate links below especially that link for the sweet potato plants go ahead and get those ordered if you think you're going to need some go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we've got recipes our garden blog recommended products shirts hats all kind of good stuff if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm mm -hmm.